What is up everyone? Welcome to episode 219 of the Fight Library. We're just going up and up on these episodes. It's awesome. Anyways, I am your host Blaine Henry and today we are talking about some boxing. Am I talking about Joseph Parker versus Derek Chisora? No. Am I talking about Rene Alvarado and Roach? No. Am I talking about any other professional boxers besides Jake Paul? No. I'm talking about Jake Paul today, guys. Don't get mad at me. I like Jake Paul. He uh, rematched with Tyron, Tyron Woodley on short notice after Tommy Fumbles pulls out of the fight. And um, it was a fun night, actually. It was... Oh, my gosh. So, um, before you tone out, I, I like Jake Paul. I like what he does. Like, of course, I know he's not a world beater boxer. It's pretty obvious. But he talks so much trash that it's hilarious. Like, people get so mad about it. And he's just coming out here. He's going to beat up MMA fighters <laughs> in the boxing ring that are smaller than him. Yeah. So, <laughs> let's talk about it. Um, Jake Paul versus Tyron Woodley. For originally supposed to be Jake Paul versus Tommy Fury. But Tommy pulled out due to an injury. And Jake Paul says he's never fighting him again. Dude has to lay down the law, I guess. So... Early on, Jake Paul comes with a nice step around. Um, Woodley has a slow jab, and if I, I, I said if that was going to get, be his game plan, it's going to be a bad night. And little did I know it was going to be a bad night, but not because of Woodley's slow jab. It was just because he kept clinching all night. Um, and round two, we could see what what Jake Paul's plan was without knowing. Um, we don't know how smart Jake Paul was as a boxer, and you know what he does is very very basic. Um, which I mean. A guy who's been boxing two and a half years, what do you expect, right? So, Woodley, uh, I mean, Paul starts changing levels and he's fainting the jab, throws a nice right hook to the body. Uh, but th it's this lowering of the hands is what he said post fight that he was trying to do. And if he's telling the truth, I mean, all signs point to him telling the truth. He he, he went to the body all night when he could, right? Um, Woodley and, and Jake, though, they were leading with their heads. Woo. Well, you know, they were rearing back on their punches. Um, I mean, I'm a, I'm a be critical of Jake Paul today because he did a lot of things bad, but I'm also gonna give him credit where his credits due. So, uh, bear with me here as I flesh this out. He's leading with his head, and I don't know if Woodley. I said I don't know I, when I was writing my notes. I said I don't know if Woodley has the boxing to do something with him leading his head, and he didn't. Um, leading with your head, it just leaves you open. Like my face is forward, so I can get punched in the face. Um. Another thing Jake Paul doesn't do good is when he jabs, he he leaves his hand out there, right? He's supposed to bring it back, stay on the phone, pop, 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 like that. So he leaves us right here. That leaves him susceptible to that right over the top, which Woodley should have known. It should have been something that he worked on, but he didn't, and he got knocked out because of it. Um, round three, but... You know, Woodley comes out firing more, but nothing's working. I mean, it's really weird. Uh, Paul has a cut on his forehead. Said it was from an elbow. It looked like it was from a headbutt because the two were leading with their heads like dum-dums. Um, Woodley landed a right, and Jake took a step back in round three. And everybody's like, oh, my gosh, here it comes. Um, yeah, so crazy. Woodley, he pushed for a second, then he stopped. What is new, right? Tyron Woodley does that all the time and it drives me nuts because I was pulling for Tyron Woodley this fight nope not happening he's not going to get this Anderson Silva type boxing career he's going to get knocked out by Jake Paul twice <laughs> um yeah Jake Paul he's pushing his jab and he's sticking and leaving it out I'm just going crazy he's leaving it out he's going over the shoulder of Woodley and I'm just like oh my gosh but this entire fight he's going to the body and I'm like Okay, that's that's good. You know, he's working on his cardio. It's not what he was doing. He was setting up his final shot. Um. Oh, in round four, <laughs> they're, they're leading with their head and they're ducking. So Woodley grabs him with a duck under and throws him to the canvas <laughs> like he's wrestling. <laughs> like, look, young man, I'm a wrestler. I would kill you if we really wanted to fight, but we're boxing. It was ridiculous, and the ref warned, you can't do that. Don't do that again. <laughs> Um, Paul abandoned his jab in round three and four, I think. And then he started using it in round five again. Uh, another thing I noticed when I talked about this in the, um, I talked about my headbutt piece I'm working on in 
the MMA episode, which you can check out. But uh, Woodley was leading with the crown of his head. And headbutting is illegal in boxing. But Woodley's leading with the crown of his head, which is this area right here. That's the hardest part of your head. And when you when you headbutt someone, that's what you want to, boom, hit them with, right? So Woodley is fighting dirty. Very, very, very dirty, you know? And it's like, I get it. You got to show him who the, who the boss is. Anyway, so he's leading with his head. He's trying to headbutt Jake Paul. So no way around. That's what he's trying to do. No big deal. I mean, he didn't really do it. But that could be dangerous, and it's a dirty tactic. But, hey, he's a smaller guy, and he can come up with that headbutt. Round six, you could tell Jake Paul was tired. Um, his shots were labored. And Woodley started to throw a little bit more. I thought that Woodley was phoning it in the first few rounds so he can get him tired and then land that clean shot. And that might have been it, but it didn't work. Because clinching, that's all he's doing is clinching. After clinching, Jake Paul comes in, throws an ugly combo, steps back, and then uh, Woodley starts to open up, right? Then Jake Paul, he changes levels, feints the jab to the body like he's been doing all night, and then he comes up top with a right. Wow. Down goes Tyron Woodley. <coughs> Down goes Tyron Woodley. Whoa, round six, Tyron Woodley is gone. What just happened, right? <laughs> oh, my. I went. I, I, my hands were on my head. My jaw dropped. I was, wow, is what I was like. I, I couldn't believe what I had just saw. So, yeah, um. Not an entertaining fight until the very end. You know, the, the the knockout was brutal. Thud. A giant thud. It was it was beautiful. I really liked that Jake Paul had a plan coming into this fight. You know, he said it after. I was setting up that shot the whole night. I, 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 I believe him. That's something that you can work on in camp pretty easy. Right? So, the, the we talked about it in MMA with Ricky Simone the last episode, but Jake Paul, he, he, he's changing levels all night. So he's, he's, he's going a jab to the body, jab to the body. And that, that, that conditions would lead to, um, a boom, 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 boom. But you see what's happening there. You know, hands are going down. Boom, boom. Any smart, good boxer will know, Oh, his hands are going down. Whop over the top. And Jake Paul, he showed that in that moment, he was a smart and good boxer. So, man, I, I like having Jake Paul around, bro. <laughs> as nasty and as filthy as he is, I just I like having him around. He's fun. He's so fun. Um, Mike Pendleton said, uh, "Yeah, he he hates the Paul brothers." Which I get it, Mike. It's it's all right, and I I I he wrote a piece trashing him ahead of like. I think the Askren fight. And uh, I wrote a rebuff to him. Me and him, were, we were friends. We're, it wasn't beef or anything like that. We both write for Eric at Miami MMA News. And uh, it wasn't it wasn't anything. But I was just like, hey, I'm going to counter his point. And I did. And ever since then, he's just had to eat it. And I feel bad for him <laughs> because I got lucky and I was right. But, I mean, when I looked at Jake Paul, it was after the Robinson fight going into the Ben Askren. I wrote a piece about it even from his Anderson Gibb to his his uh, Nate Robinson fight. He's done well. He's improved. And he improved to the Ben Askren fight. He didn't improve as much from the Askren to Woodley and from Woodley to Woodley. I think the Tyson-Tommy Fury fight would have been close, very close. been a hard fight for him, but he's a bigger guy. Now, is Jake Paul juiced to the gills? Absolutely. He refused the WADA testing for the Tommy Fury fight. Um, but yeah, just Mike, I love you, bro. <laughs> I'm sorry though, but it's just hilarious. <laughs> oh man. So what does Jake Paul do next? He has to have a tune up fight. Like he needs to get into actual boxing mode and like these Woodley fights were good for him because he got some, some good rounds on him. Right. So you see what like Gibb, it was a first round knockout. Nate Robinson was round two. Ben Askren was round one. This Woodley fight, he got 14 rounds in. 14 good hard rounds. It tested him. It made him realize he has to actually work and get better. And he needs to bring some new people into his camp, sure. But I don't know. He just, it's ridiculous how funny this is to me because, like, 
I don't know, man. It's it's funny. It is hilarious. <laughs> All right, guys, that's gonna be it for me. Check me out on Patreon. Uh, new stuff every month. I've got a really cool piece that you guys would like, especially you boxing guys. It's called Vasil Lomachenko Layers. I wrote it talking about the footwork to what Vasil Lomachenko does and how he uses that and he uses options to break his opponent. Of course, we go through the Richard Comey fight. Um, uh, yeah, so you guys really, really like that. That's a fantastic piece. Uh, five bucks a month, it's really not expensive at all. You can afford that. And it's just, it just helps me out. You, you support me. You show me how much you love me. And uh, I love you guys. <laughs> uh, last boxing event of 2021, I believe. I might have something else coming. But yeah, Merry Christmas, everyone. Happy New Year's, if I if you don't catch me. Long live Jake Paul. <laughs>